Hi folks, today we're going to discuss a topic different from what we used to discuss. Um, we have a guest. Hi, Laura. Hi, Yusuf. How are you doing? Good, very good. So tell me more about you and your role at Databricks. So um, my role at Databricks is to be uh, the migration specialist for uh, EMEA and especially for data warehouse migra uh, migrations. Previously to this role, I have been a solutions architect for more than two years and a half, uh, dealing with the biggest customers in EMEA. Um, and here I am, a migration specialist for all this data warehouse stuff. Cool. I'm, I'm very curious. I've seen a lot of customers having a legacy data warehouse uh, on-premise. And I was curious to know, like, uh, about more about the steps that need to be followed to have a successful uh, migrations? Well, first of all, we have to understand why the data warehouse and the data warehousing is the data warehouse, sorry, is usually serving the business. So we have to clearly understand the business of our customer and why the database, uh, the data warehouse serves the business. So assessing all the business case is a key element of the process. Then we will uh, analyze, assess the current platform, and more on the technical uh, side of the of the of the migration. That means that we will look at the the, the current environment, the different the the current uh, architecture which is implemented, uh, the, the the current data model because data modeling is key for data warehousing, and of course, in Databricks we can implement all the various data models that exist. Uh, as of today. So um, knowing the, 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 the current platform is the first uh, step of a migration process. Then we will analyze the target, uh, uh, the target environment. And so the target environment, of course, is Databricks. That means that we will serve also a certain types and certain number of business case into Databricks. And Maybe probably we will add some new uh, modern use case like real-time streaming to help our customers to implement real-time uh, decision-making. Uh, we will probably implement some new use case built on top of machine learning and even Gen AI. And so once we will have defined what will run in the target environment, and knowing the, 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 the starting point of the migration, we will be able to draw a way to transform the current environment to the target environment. That means that we will use some uh, tools, some um, uh, process to make the architecture evolve from a point to another, another one. Uh, so as I mentioned, we will uh, use some tools. We will use some uh, migration process that we will define with our customer to transform their current environment smoothly to uh, Databricks. Interesting. So just to summarize, you need to understand the business con context, then understand the logic or the code to know how to refactor this code to be executed on the Databricks platform. And according to you, which part is mainly complex? Is it the understanding the business or the maybe the conversion of the code or the refactoring of the code? Well, understanding the business is key, as I mentioned, but every one of us is able to discuss with the customer, be curious of their environment and have a, a very interesting discussion to, to understand why they are using such an environment to, uh, to, to, to implement their decision-based system. Um, transforming is quite a bit complex because uh, usually all these data warehouses are implemented in a relational database uh, system. Um, and so we have to convert uh, all the ETL process, all the data, the, 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 the table, the, the, the model definition to Databricks. So that's not the most complex part of, of, the, of the transformation process. But we also have to uh, care about the different ETL process, how they are implemented. Uh, is the current platform using a third-party tool for its ETL process? Uh, how we can convert uh, this from a stored procedure to Databricks, for example? And so 
we have to, to think about this and build the, 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 the new way to implement the decision system into Databricks. And according to you, uh, I've been reading some medium posts on some customers who did migrate. And often they try to replicate what they had in their legacy system in the new system. Like I can talk about, like for example, stored procedures. Some of some of them, for example, in the we don't have stored procedures now. It's on the way, but it is always a good thing to re replicate what we had or what the customer had, or maybe think about new ways of uh, making the platform more modern. Yes. Well, speaking uh, technically speaking, you have to care about this transformation. Let's take an example. Imagine you have a, a star schema on uh, um, a legacy uh, database solutions. Uh, and in this database, you can implement some decision-based uh, uh, workloads, but you can also implement some OLTP workloads. That means that the solution, the RDBMS, has a set of different tools or objects that will be able to uh, optimize the, the workload by putting some indexes, some partitioning strategies, and that kind of uh, techniques to, uh, to, 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 to make the, the, the workload uh, efficient. If you move to Databricks, we don't have indexes. We have uh, partitioning strategies, and we have more. We have clustering uh, on, on Delta, for example. And the, the, the the way you will partition your data on the source data platform and the way you will implement a clustering uh, strategy on data rigs can be completely different. And so, for example, you have to care about this. Um, and uh, um, yes. One more question for you. We announced uh, at the, the Data and AI Summit several uh, new features for the data warehousing. It includes uh, auto liquid, auto stats, Predict predictive IO 2.0. Uh, yeah. So yeah, which one is your favorite, and which one you would you want to test first, like according to you? Well, um, I like the the the, um, the auto liquid clustering. Um, I'm very uh, uh, impatient to 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 test it out because. Each time you will have, for example, a SAR schema, it will be uh, in very key to have a clean partitioning, as I mentioned just before. And so having the auto-liquid clustering will help us to, depending on the workload and depending on all the, 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 the analysis that we uh, will execute on our, uh, uh, on our side, to, to determine what will be the, the best uh, uh, clustering strategy and make it happen automatically will definitely is the way to implement a, a data warehousing strategy on Databricks. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And just to give more context, Databricks introduced first liquid clustering, where we can add a clustering here, as Laurent uh, have been mentioning. Then they did introduce predictive optimization that will go and run the optimize and vacuum which are some, let's say, overhead that was on the top of data engineers. Then they introduced auto stats. So as a data as a data engineer used to run, analyze, to capture statistics like mean, max for every column, which can be helpful for the Spark execution plan. And now on the top of it, besides capturing statistics, we're gonna understand the, path, the query pattern, like how often you run, I don't know, new workloads like, uh, select star from customers where country is equal to France or you query by by city. And based on the number of queries, like we will adapt the clustering key to be optimized for your queries and improve them. Which means if now you're querying by year, by year and by country, in three months you start uh, filtering by year and city, your layer, your clustering key will change automatically without with with the massive impact which is the performance and i i'm pretty convinced that you know for all the existing platform the that makes years that they are implementing automatic uh, strategies but now the future is on ai and i think that all the the stuff around predictive io and the way we will automatically change the 
the, 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 the clustering uh, key, the way we will uh, automatically trigger a, a statistic uh, collection and that kind of stuff is the future and the future and the future of Databricks is uh, also part of it. And it will drastically ease the, the, the way we will use uh, uh, Databricks and a data warehousing uh, strategy on top of Databricks. Thank you, Laurent, and stay tuned for part two very Thanks. soon.